All right, we are back today with Alex Yarbo. Alex is in my mentorship program and he specializes in and focuses on short-term rentals, but more specifically, uh, a unique uh, strategy in short-term rentals, build to rent short-term rentals ground up, as well as covered land plays, which is where maybe you've got a house on some property that's uh, residual that you can build on, uh, things like that. So Alex, how's it going? Uh, thanks for having me, man. Really good. Yeah, awesome. And also, we're going to tell people about your new short-term rental course that you've put together. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So how's that going? It's it's going really well. We're actually launching it uh, tomorrow. Um, been putting the last six months into into putting it together and make sure it's perfect. But essentially, what I've been saying is I, I I created the course that I wish I had when I started six years ago. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So we'll get into that here in a couple of minutes. Um, and I'll put a link to that uh, in the description of the video so people can go to your website, sign up for it. Are you doing like a pre registration thing for people? Yeah, I mean, it's, so it's it's launching tomorrow, so I'm not even doing the pre-registration thing. Um, just like once once it launches tomorrow, it's launching tonight. Um, the people can just sign up through that. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, so I'll just put this video live when you're ready to go. So, anyway, so yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, you know uh, where you know what you're doing, where you've started. More importantly, I think since you and I've started, you've probably a hundred x the business, right? So. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm we've taken it to a place that I never even thought it, it would have gone. To be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean, backing up all the way for people who don't know me. Um, so like I, I coming out of the military, I had about like a, my enlistment was coming up about a year and then I just didn't know what I wanted to do, decided I didn't want to re-enlist. Um, so I just re started reading up on different investing classes, uh, crypto stock market, real estate, real estate really caught my eye. Um, uh, just cause I, I enjoyed the control over what you could have with real estate with like forced appreciation and everything. So, um, I had originally joined a flipping mentorship. And what I realized was the gentleman that was in charge of that flipping mentorship, most of his long-term wealth was tied into short-term rentals. Um, so I, I got him on the phone and really picked his brain about um, the best market, what type of like how to choose a market and the best markets to invest in short-term rentals. And he he was the one who actually helped me decide on Asheville, North Carolina, because I'm the, originally not from where I currently live here. And uh, the day I got out of the uh, Marine Corps, I drove I drove straight here. I had an apartment lined up, but besides that, nothing else besides some money that I had saved up. Um, got my real estate license, and then um, I started looking for a short-term rental myself. Um, and what I realized was that there anything that was on the market was at that time either way out of my price range or it just wouldn't have done well as a, a unique short-term rental. It probably would have done well as like a long-term rental, but like something where you can create an experience for the guests. I felt like it was just, it, there was nothing on the market. So my very first real estate project, my very first real estate investment was a new develop, ground up development from raw land um, into a short-term rental. And then one turned into two, two turned into four, brought on some investors with your help. And just today alone, like we're developing 24 right now. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> Cool. But, so, you know, one thing that's interesting about short-term rentals, and here's a little nugget to kind of throw out there. So as you know, and many people may or may not know, I started in 1997 as a real estate developer doing short-term rentals back before, you know, Airbnb and VRBO right. was a thing. I can't remember when VRBO started, but they were first building multi-million dollar, you know, resort destination beach houses. And what's pretty interesting about the business back then versus now is it wasn't as popular as it is now. Like, you know, short-term rentals are just like a meme now. Everybody wants to get into them <clears throat> and they become a different thing. But back then it was really interesting because I was building ground up exclusively on short-term rentals. I mean, some we were buying and putting pools in and ground floors, you know, like the houses were all built on pilings at the beach. So the ground floor was generally open. So we'd go in and close that in, create like a rec room, another bedroom. Then we put a pool in and that would increase the rental income generally by thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year on a house, and really cover a lot of the costs. Some houses had added about a hundred grand to the income if it was oceanfront. But anyways, long story short, when I was building them new to sell, because I built to sell, I didn't want to keep right. anything. You had to have a year's worth of income uh, behind the property for people to want to buy them. They wanted to see that this house was proven that it would generate the income. So they were always worth more after a year once you had a good year's full of income. But most people wouldn't buy a brand new, you know, short term rental unit from me or anybody else that was building them until they had at least one year, you know, full season. Yeah, under, it was really interesting. You know? Yeah. And, and now it's completely different. I feel like when I'm pushing out the course now is sort of the perfect timing because there are a lot of lenders out there that that's how it used to be as well. It's like they like 
maybe five or six years ago, they wouldn't even let you, there, there would no lender would offer any financing if it didn't have at least a year or two, even if it was a built property. And now it's like, you have a lot of different lenders, even in the commercial space that are maybe coming from like RV parks or like micro resort communities that are saying, Hey, we'll, we'll finance these type of pro projects with no income. Um, just like a track record essentially is what they look for. Yeah. Yeah. They do projected income and see, we weren't able to use that. We had to right. finance them based on our balance sheet and, you know, I was paying nine and three quarters percent interest on my construction loans back then. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, no, it's I mean, funny. That's why like people, dollars people a month freak, going out in interest payments at one point. People freaking out about interest rates now. And one of my investors was like, man, my first mortgage I ever got in the 80s was at 14 percent. I was like, OK, that makes me feel a little better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, five, six percent was good back back, you know, not too long ago. Yeah, it's right. just, you know, people have been really spoiled here the last few years and especially right. people that have just gotten into the industry with the markets, everything, people didn't go through 2008 and nine. They've got a very skewed view of, right. you know, how things so, can, can go. But, right. you know, Clear the other thing was too, it, that's really changed now is that it used to be almost exclusively like resort kind of areas where you did short-term rentals. Right. Now you can put one almost anywhere. And people anywhere. I was just thinking about that this morning. Different yep. geographies and just kind of look at and do different things. But one thing you might want to think about anybody watching, if you're going to do this is, um, you know, you might want to start looking at major sporting events. Like I saw a post the other day of a guy that's got a property out in Arizona where the Super Bowl is going to be this year. And he booked uh, $250,000 on a high end luxury rental property for the two weeks of the Super Bowl, two different properties. Yeah. So if you target areas where maybe the Olympics are coming internationally, as well as in yeah. this country, uh, where major sporting events are going to be, even some minor sporting events like travel leagues for, you know, baseball or soccer or lacrosse or whatever you know, those will do very well too. So different Another, business model now than it was, you know, back when I first got started. And it's interesting too, because it, a lot of markets are being made because of short-term rentals. I was just talking to someone out in New York and he was telling me like back in the eighties, nineties, early two thousands, like the cat skills of upstate New York was nothing. And now it's like a prime short-term rental area. And what I tell, and I, I talk about this in the course, but what I tell students is that you might not think your market is unique and it might not, maybe your look, like, grass is greener on the other side. But what I always say is try to think of a place where people in your market like to take a weekend or maybe an extended weekend vacation. And that might be the market. It, it might not be the exact market you're currently in, but if it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes away, an hour away, um, those markets, those little pockets exist everywhere in the country and internationally as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. And you know, from a construction standpoint, as we know, the housing inventory is pretty limited in a lot of areas. That's starting to correct a little bit in some areas, right. but it's still pretty tight in most areas. And with the interest rates rising and the real estate market shifting, that's going to create an opportunity in new construction. So when I started in the business, that was the big issue was resale properties were more expensive, just like you found. So it was cheaper to buy land and build new than it was to buy existing. So that's why building Generally, that's when it makes more sense to build is when you can build cheaper than you can buy or when there's no inventory. So we're going to see land prices start to come down because land is always the slowest moving segment of the market in most areas when housing is correcting. You're also going to see construction costs. We're already seeing construction costs come down because the big national builders are pulling back. They're not building. So subcontract labor is going to be more available. Materials are coming down, more accessible, things like that. So it's going to get easier, cheaper and faster uh, to build. Uh, now than it has been the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic, there's going to be more land available at the right price. So it's a good opportunity now to take advantage of, you know, new construction and all that. And I think, is, is your course specific to that? Or do you, you know, what do you cover in general on short-term rentals? Yeah, I mean, we can we can do a screen record real quick, but uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, the the course covers, <laughs> um, it covers, so the, the whole thesis on it is first short-term rentals is like building unique short-term rentals. So that might mean glamping if you're just starting. That might mean, it, it might not just be permanent foundation stick built, but um, it talks about everything from land analysis, um, what type of property you should build, building, what to think about, what's specific to your market. Um, and then it goes into play, uh, like how to build your team out. I'm just looking at it right now. And then also we talk about how to go big and stuff. So if you want to do these micro resort communities, like how I'm doing, um, I, I started to talk about that as well and uh, like briefly touch, uh, touch on capital raising and stuff as well. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and share your screen so we can just yep. take a look at it while people are here. And, uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of education as you know, and, and, uh, so I'm excited that you've done this. And I know this is really going to help people because you've just learned a ton over the last few years that you've been doing this. And I know you're tapped into a lot of big short-term rental groups and things like that. And 
you're writing articles on bigger pockets. You know, if y'all haven't seen that, go check out Alex on bigger pockets. He's got a blog there that he runs on short-term rentals has some really great advice. Um, but yeah, why don't you take us through this real quick? Yeah. So I, I put this together because like you just said, a lot of people from bigger pockets were especially reaching out to me, asking me, Hey, do you have 30 minutes of your time? Do you have an hour of your time? And it just got to a point where I just couldn't take all those calls. So I'm like, Hey, let me put a, especially a lot of my friends have been asking as well. So I was like, Hey, let me put together a course. Cause I feel like there's a market for this, especially with all the things we just talked about. But yeah, so we, we start off, um, this is the course. Um, there's a, I, we're going to talk about it too, but there's also a support group coaching piece to it as well that once a month, or I mean, there's an email that you can reach out to with support, but once a month, if you have any specific questions, because development, there's so many moving parts um, that you can reach out to me through a private Facebook group where we go live for a couple hours of me just answering questions once a month. Um, but you have the fundamentals. There's over 120 videos um, talking about the different different types of properties you can build. Um, and we go into like financing, we go into like market and property research. Um, we go into building out your team, architects, engineers, general contractors, um, honestly going really in depth. Um, a lot of the, like the team stuff can be covered probably with your real estate agent and GC, but we dive deep into talking about how to find the people that type right questions to ask as well. Um, different financing structures that currently exist in the short-term rental space and how to take advantage of if you already own your own land, if you already own property, how to develop more on that property if there's if there's room for it. Partnerships and structures, intro to capital building, how I raise capital, um, going big, talking about if you actually do want to go big compared to maybe you're maybe you're just comfortable having three, four, five properties that throw off. 20 to 40,000 in cash flow a year. Maybe that's all you want to do. So we talk about if you actually want to do the bigger communities. And then if you do want to do the bigger communities, just some of the rules and some of the things that sort of play into doing some of the bigger stuff, because it is different than building maybe one or two properties. And then there's also a bonus management section, management course that I put together. So um, how to Managing rank on Airbnb. Properties. What was that? Managing the properties. Yeah. So if you want to take on the management yourself, there's a bonus management section that I include in the course as well that talks about how to list your property and different things to talk, uh, different things that go into different tools. Uh, and again, there's same thing with the development piece, just the different team that you need to get put together if you want to manage them yourself. And the course also talks about how to find a manager and what uh, if you don't want to do it yourself. Um, but everything's in here, the, the, um, the resources you have messaging templates, review templates, um, inventory templates. You have templates in the the development side of it as well. So like a furnishing checklist with, I just furnished a five bedroom cabin with everything with links that you need um, with what to furnish a property with. Uh, JV agreements, that's like a boilerplate. There's a disclaimer there that like, obviously you have to seek your own um, legal support, but um, there, there's templates in there on what to say and everything. And then the biggest thing um, that I put together for this was just, um, so you can find it here real quick, was uh, is a workbook. Oh, that's um, awesome. So I put together, yeah, I put together a 60, uh, between the two courses is 66 pages, but essentially fill in the blank while you're going through the courses uh, workbook. Uh, which is, I essentially tried to create every single support type of thing that you would need um, to do this yourself. Cause like, you know, more than better than anyone that there are a lot of moving pieces in, in development. That's why this course is so big. Um, but I tried to cover probably 90 to 95% of everything. And the 5% that's not covered can be covered in the, the group coaching calls. Right. Right. Yeah. And I assume that as you get those questions, you're going to update your course with the things that, you know, yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. and I mean, the people who are currently, uh, whoever purchased the course will have uh, um, access to all those updates as well. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's, that's, that's the goal with any business is just, I guess, adapting what's currently working, because things, things are changing every six months, every three months, things are changing right now. Especially in technology, but just that, like I said, the way the business has evolved in and of itself, you know, going from like the business I started in where, you know, it was week to week, you had to check in on a Sunday, check right. out on a Saturday, you know, that kind of thing to now uh, with short term rentals, what we're seeing, especially over the last couple of years is people booking last minute versus well in advance, like a year in advance, you know, down on the beach. And you still have to, if you want that house for the same time next year, you have to book while you're there. 
But most short-term rentals now, I mean, people are booking last minute, they're booking shorter stays and they're experimenting more and trying out different locations. Like I said, some of them are like in the middle of nowhere. People are like, I'm fine. I want to go stay in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's it's funny that uh, so the the person that helped me integrate all the technology when it comes to putting this course together, he was like, hey, man, I just purchased this 48 acre parcel in Canada, like three hours away from Toronto. And he's like, uh, he's like, I'm going to purchase your course because like um, my brother and I just built hand, like they built two small cabins on this 48 acre parcel. And he's like, we just listed one of them. And like, we're like booked out like 70% already the first month. And this was lit. This, this is in the middle of nowhere. There's no running water. There's no, it's just a cabin with like an outhouse. And I was like, I guess there's a need for it. If the dude who's helping me put together the technology wants the course. So, yeah. Well, you know, I didn't really thought about it, but you know, where I was at on the Outer Banks, you know, we had the ocean, we had the sound, you know, like a bay area and there yeah. were beautiful area, marsh by the islands way. and people yeah, were yeah. building these little fish shacks on these marsh islands. So it's like that, no, you know, running water or anything, but they had electricity going to them, you know, and you take a boat out to them and just kind of hang out and fish, you know, uh, that would have been neat to kind of do some Airbnbs on some of those. They may be doing it, you know, for all I know right now, but. I know, I know there's an island going up in Hilton Head where you have to take a ferry to the island to get to the short terminal. It's almost like my wife and I had stayed in the Maldives where like you need a boat to get to the resort. And so yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, the water huts. Yeah, 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 yeah. The water huts. It's it was cool. It was Maldives. trippy at night, though. People don't know whoever stays in those huts. Those things move at night a lot because a lot of wind off the water. Yeah. Uh, my wife like caught like woke up and was like, call the front desk right now because this thing's about to fall in the water. I was like, no, they need to like they shift a lot at night. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, well, so do the houses on the beach that I build right. because they're on pilings and, you know, they move, even if you enclose the ground floor, they still move quite a bit with the winds down there, but the ones that aren't enclosed in the bottom, they, they dance. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, they'll snap if they don't. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, I'm looking forward to the launch of the course. And uh, like I said, we're going to post a link uh, to the video so people can go sign up when it, when it's available and uh man it looks it looks fantastic lots of information and and you know the resources i'm sure you have all the new online you know automation technology yep. resources listed as well and all that kind of stuff yeah i mean just like with anything like the goal of the business is to be able to work on the business not in it so i mean automation is like my number one thing is i mean you know me like i run a pretty lean team i have almost nobody on staff like most i have gcs that work for me management uh like cleaning companies that work for me but i talk about that in the course of like you can you can build a seven seven eight figure business with running a pretty lean team i mean you run a pretty lean team as well so yeah, yeah i learned that over the years i mean that's kind of the way i always operated even you know even when i had bigger teams it was still you know i wasn't working in the business at any given exactly. moment. i had people running it but um you know what's really cool about this too is the numbers so that's what's really changed too is that you know, that was really what was really interesting about what you're doing and some other people that um, work with some other areas doing short term rentals is, you know, the income that you can generate net income on your cost base is very different than my world because these yeah. properties are expensive. But, you know, the, the stuff that people are doing now in these other areas where, you you know, you got two, three, four hundred thousand all in and you're generating over a hundred thousand a year in income is just nuts. Yeah. Like we, we built our first A-frame turnkey for about two hundred twenty thousand with land and furnishings. That one was 830 square foot. And that one that one netted us about 48,000 in in income. And then it grossed 84,000. Yeah. Um, so it grossed 84, net 40 something after debt service. After everything. Yeah. After okay, debt so service. to put that in perspective, where my areas like beaches and most areas of the country and the beaches, to get eighty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars a year in annual income, you're gonna have to spend one, one point two million to get that. So, I mean, you can buy five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Four or five of what you're doing for that same, same dollar. And that was the problem with our areas. It's, it's, you don't make any money. You know, they break yeah, and, their annuities. They're great. You get to use them, but they're yeah. not cash cows. Like, like the stuff that you can do in these other areas now. Yeah. And it's like it, it, the, the mountain markets. And again, we talk about it in the course, but it's like some of, some of these more rural markets as well, where you have a unique property in the mountains or somewhere in the woods um, is that there's, they're a little bit less seasonal where people like to stay in them in the winter where the property becomes an the attraction itself in the winter during the down season. And then the city and the market itself becomes the attraction during the high season, the summer or the leaf season. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, Alex, thanks for taking a few minutes out and sharing uh, the course with us. And man, I know it's, I know it's going to help a lot of people. I uh, appreciate it, brother. 
Talk to you soon.